2016. The world gathers in Rio de Janeiro for the Summer Olympics, while the Zika virus ravages Brazil. The United Kingdom votes to leave the European Union. Terror strikes Istanbul, Brussels, Nice, Berlin, and Orlando, and the world said goodbye to legends like David Bowie, Prince, and Muhammad Ali. Netflix got a little stranger, and Leo DiCaprio won his long-awaited Oscar. Believe me, he had to earn it. Ah! The Cubs broke a 108-year curse. The Cavaliers broke a 52-year curse for the city of Cleveland, coming back from three games to one to beat the Warriors in the NBA Finals, a Warriors team that won an NBA record 73 games. The Penguins took the Stanley Cup, and Peyton Manning was able to ride off into the sunset with his second Super Bowl, where he could pursue his true passion. Yeah, I'm going to drink a lot of Budweiser tonight, Tracy. Spotlight wins Best Picture. Ed Sheeran wins Song of the Year for Thinking Out Loud. Oh yeah, and there was that whole presidential election that nobody will ever forget. 2016 was a loaded year in the amusement world. We saw promising beginnings, sad endings, the rise and fall of fads, and changes all around that still affect us to this day. These are the events that changed the theme park industry from 2016. With such a loaded year, not everything was top 10 worthy. Here's the best of the rest. And now for the top 10. m and is a park in Scotland with a lot of portable rides, one of those being the Benfari Inverted Coaster Tsunami. This is a pretty rare model, only six have been built, and it had been operating at this park for 12 years until its unexpected final day. June 26, 2016. Shortly after leaving the lift hill, one of the five car trains completely derailed from the track, falling 30 feet to the ground at speeds of 40 miles per hour. Remarkably, nobody was killed, but eight children and two adults suffered significant injuries. This accident was reported worldwide, as this dramatic, complete derailment is extremely rare in the theme park industry. Upon investigation, they found an inspector cleared the ride as safe just two weeks prior, but they found significant issues with the mechanical and structural parts of the ride, and they had serious concerns about the maintenance of Tsunami and other rides. M&D survived the tragedy and operates to this day, but this was the end for Tsunami. It was dismantled in February of 2017, the victims of the accident were able to sue the park for 1.2 million pounds in damages. Geauga Lake had a rich history in Northeast Ohio, opening in 1889, welcoming its first roller coaster in 1925. This was family owned until 1969, when Funtime Incorporated bought the park. Funtime was then bought by Premier Parks in 1995, and Premier then bought Six Flags in 1998. In 2000, Geauga Lake was renamed Six Flags Ohio, and when they acquired the adjacent SeaWorld Park, they combined the two to create Six Flags Worlds of Adventure, one park with thrills on one side and marine life on the other. But the park grew too fast, Six Flags ran into financial problems, and they sold the park to Cedar Fair in 2004. The next year, Cedar Fair invested $26 million into a brand new water park on the former SeaWorld site, this being called Wild Water Kingdom. But facing a sharp decline in attendance, they shut down the amusement park after 2007, all that was left of this legendary park was Wild Water Kingdom. August 19th, 2016. Cedar Fair announced that this would be the final year of Wild Water Kingdom. Cedar Fair has been working cooperatively with both Bainbridge Township and the city of Aurora to redevelop the entire property into what will best benefit the surrounding communities. After examining its long-range plans, Cedar Fair has determined that the time is right to begin this transition and will continue to work together with community leadership in the positive future development of the property. Its final day of operation was September 5th. The remaining rides were demolished the next year, including the Big Dipper, the coaster that started it all for Geauga Lake. It was the only piece remaining from the amusement park, but the closure of Wild Water Kingdom also meant the demolition of this classic. 
This plot has been an empty lot for years now, but a plan is in motion to develop this into a residential and commercial area. June 28, 2016. Colmarden debuts their massive RMC wooden coaster, Wildfire. This is a zoo in southern Sweden, featuring some small rides, and they stunned everyone when they announced they were working with Rocky Mountain Construction on a 183-foot topper track wooden coaster. With over 4,100 feet of track and three inversions, following an 83-degree drop at 161 feet, this entered the discussion of being the world's best coaster. But there was another discussion going on that was downright terrifying. October 28, 2016. Wildfire was shut down after its first season, due to its permit being revoked by the government over environmental reasons. The court believes that the ride raises so many questions that it should have been preceded by a detailed plan, which it has not done. Colmarden insisted they followed all the guidelines while building the ride, and now they were being given a different answer after it had been operating for a whole season, and there was a possibility that this would need to be torn down. When asked, the president of the Construction and Environmental Committee said, it is likely that we will ask them to remove Wildfire. It turns out Colmarden did not get the permits they needed, but they were told it was okay to forgo the process. Some people were unhappy with this, and upon secondary review, they said Colmarden could not proceed without the permits. The battle continued into 2017, and both parties worked out a deal to allow the coaster to open. The park worked with the government to get the proper approvals even after the park opened for the season. And finally, by late June, the nightmare was over. Wildfire was back open to the public. March 31st, 2016. Cedar Fair came out with an exciting announcement regarding California's Great America. They had been leasing the land under the park ever since acquiring it in 2006. But since the city of Santa Clara was being forced to sell it, they announced their intention to buy it. In addition, they had also applied to change the zoning law so they could build bigger rides. This was in conjunction with their plan to build a city walk style complex outside the park, also playing off the popularity of Levi Stadium next door. They introduced a proposed map with plans for a major new coaster, as well as a ropes course, Dinosaurs Alive, and other family attractions, including a renovation of their Vortex stand-up coaster. Later in the year, they submitted a 20-year master plan to the city, including a hyper coaster and an impulse coaster. In early 2017, those plans were approved. A plan was set in motion for a hyper coaster to be installed, using the code name Megabyte, but apparently construction costs were through the roof. Cedar Fair redirected this project to Kings Island, and that would become Orion, opening in 2020. Fast forward to today, and the grand plans to lift Great America into the upper tier are dead and gone. Cedar Fair has sold the land under the park to Prologis, and they're going to close the park within the next 11 years. It's been a long and slow fall from the promise that we saw back in 2016. In 2016, we were all introduced to a well-meaning but short-lived fact. Virtual Reality. Six Flags spearheaded this movement, introducing the VR experience on nine other coasters across the chain, ranging from the smaller rides like Steam and Demon at Great Escape, to their biggest rides like Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. Riders would wear a Samsung VR headset, and they would watch a show that was synced up to the movements of the ride. This ranged from fighting space aliens, to seasonal shows like Riding in Santa's Sleigh. The three Superman coasters had Superman-themed shows. Six Flags wasn't alone, others jumped on the bandwagon as well. Alton Towers would retheme their B&M flying coaster, Air, now called Galactica and with the VR headsets. Cedar Point would introduce VR on Iron Dragon in the summer of 2016 also. I'm not sure if these parks believe these will be a permanent feature on these rides, given the retheming and renaming of rides like the New Revolution, Galactica, and Superman the Ride. Perhaps they did, but it didn't last. This caused dispatches to suffer, and in turn, wait times exploded, and the headsets would often overheat and stop working. The New Revolution gave its VR goggles to Lex Luthor and changed its name back to the Classic Revolution. Galactica phased out their VR goggles by 2019 due to guest feedback. Cedar Point's experiment lasted only a year. This was a fad that was fun at first, but thankfully died off quickly. June 16th, 2016. Shanghai Disneyland opens to the public, a five-year project that finally gave Disney the park they wanted in mainland China. This was a sticky topic with the presence of Hong Kong Disneyland, the struggling park that opened in 2005. They knew that if Disney ever opened a park in mainland China, it would sap their client base so much that it could doom the park. But on November 4, 2009, the Chinese government gave the green light to the new park in Shanghai. Its original opening date of late 2015 was pushed back twice, finally landing on June 2016. And by the time the park opened its gates, the original budget of $3.7 billion was expanded to $5.5 billion. Among the six theme areas were two coasters, 
Tron Light Cycle Power Run and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Shanghai Disneyland is your land. Here you leave today and discover imaginative worlds of fantasy, romance, and adventure that ignite the magical dreams within us all. Shanghai Disneyland is authentically Disney and distinctly Chinese. It was created for everyone, bringing to life timeless characters and stories in a magical place that will be the source of joy, inspiration, and memories for generations to come. Bob Iger, June 16, 2016. Shanghai Disneyland drew in 5.6 million guests in its first half a year, and they settled into a consistent range of 11 to 12 million over the next three years pre-pandemic. Although it's not one of the top attended Disney parks, it's always among the top 10 in the world as this park continues to expand. August 5th, 2015. Dollywood unveiled their plans for a brand new coaster. This would have a launch lift hill and reach speeds of 73 miles per hour, and they would do this with a wooden track. This would be the world's first launch wooden coaster, the world's fastest wooden coaster, and they would hire Rocky Mountain Construction to get the job done at the cost of $22 million. Construction started even before the announcement, as the park prepared for a March opening, wanting it to be ready when the park opened for the season. This did not happen. Nine days after the park opened, RMC's founder, Fred Grubb, said the launch lift hill would not be able to perform at the level required for proper operation. RMC did not develop the launch lift hill. That was done by Velocity Magnetics, and they worked hard over the next few months to get the ride up to speed. Occasionally, the ride would open to riders via technical rehearsals, which were very sporadic. Finally, on June 13th, almost three months after the park opened, Lightning Ride was officially open to the public. After just five days, the ride was closed once again due to a parts recall from RMC. It was down for four days and reopened, but once again, it was in technical rehearsal, and it remained so until September. Lightning Rod has been plagued with issues and extended downtime over the years, including month-long closures in 2018 and 2020. The last closure led to a major retracking, converting more than half of its track from wood to steel, citing too much stress being put on the wooden track. Lightning Rod was such an ambitious project, and it turns out it was a little too much. Now that Lightning Rod is a steel coaster, it doesn't seem likely that we will see another launch wooden coaster ever again. When Mean Streak opened in 1991, it was the tallest wooden coaster in the world. There was a wooden coaster arms race going on in the early 90s, with the likes of the DIN Corporation and RCCA building them taller and faster. Mean Streak was a beast, over a mile long, 161 feet tall, and maxing out at 65 miles per hour. Over the course of two and a half decades, Mean Streak's popularity declined. Other attractions had passed it by, and people were starting to clamor for a change. August 1st, 2016. Cedar Point announced that Mean Streak would be retired, and it would close forever on September 16th. Speculation ran wild over the next month and a half, but Mean Streak's expiration date came and went, and there was still no confirmation from the park what was going to happen with this plot of land. Cedar Fair had never worked with RMC up to this point, so there was a real possibility that Mean Streak would be torn down for a whole new ride. Finally, just a few days after its closure, a Rocky Mountain construction truck was spotted on the site, and our wildest dreams were confirmed to be coming true. Almost a year later, Cedar Point announced Steel Vengeance, a hyper-hybrid coaster, adding more height to Mean Streak's lift to top the 200-foot mark. It was everything we could have wanted from the old Mean Streak, and more. The wooden coaster arms race from the early 90s gave us some of the great hybrid coasters of the 2010s, Steel Vengeance being the best of them all. July 19th, 2013. Blackfish is released in America a documentary exposing SeaWorld's practice of keeping orcas in captivity. This sparked a backlash against SeaWorld, including public protests, and their attendance suffered along with the revenue. They had to respond, and by 2015, they started phasing out the orca shows in San Diego. By March 2016, they announced their next step, the one that would truly change the direction of the chain. Their killer whale breeding program would come to an end, keeping the ones they currently had and continuing to feature them in shows, though they would become more educational and less sensational. This would be the tipping point in the future of SeaWorld. Shamu would no longer be the face of SeaWorld, and they would move away from animal shows in general, starting to focus more on rides to bring in the crowds. Parks that just had a couple coasters would suddenly be getting multiple new additions. And had it not been for the COVID pandemic, that would have been even more pronounced in 2020 and beyond. Still, since 2016, the SeaWorld and Busch Gardens parks have added 12 new coasters, and three more are known to be in the works. You can argue that this is a good thing or a bad thing, but no matter your opinion, that decision to end the orca breeding program was significant.
Vekoma opened their first coaster in 1979, Super Verbal at Holiday Park in Germany. They were right there with aerodynamics in the 80s, building small looping coasters. And in the 90s, they specialized in suspended looping coasters and boomerangs. As coasters advanced and new manufacturers burst on the scene, Vekoma tried their hand at innovation with their Flying Dutchman, but it never caught on. They would slink into the background, doing some work for Disney parks when needed, focusing on kids and family rides. And over the next decade and a half, they worked on redefining their image. We saw some clues along the way, mainly their Stingray Flying Coaster model and their Battlestar Galactica dueling coaster in Singapore. But it was one coaster in particular that really launched the new age of Vekoma. June 25th, 2016. Formula opens at Poland's Energylandia. This LSM launch coaster has three inversions, an 81-foot top hat, 49 mile per hour top speed, and not even 2,000 feet of track. This was their Space Warp model, and it's not all that impressive stat-wise, but this would be the first of many extreme launch coasters Vekoma would roll out over the next six years, including the Shockwave, the Top Gun, and the Firestorm, as well as other non-launch extreme models, like the Wildcat, the Hyperspace Warp, and the Bermuda Blitz. They've also designed a flying launch coaster and a suspended thrill coaster, a fresh take on their old-school SLC. Vekoma has dominated the Asian and European coaster market over the last half decade, and it seems like they are unstoppable as their big projects come marching towards America. That's a wrap on 2016. Let me know if there are any other stories that I missed here, or if you would have rearranged anything from my list. Also, let me know if any coaster memories you have from 2016. This was the year I took my first major coaster road trip since 2008, going to Cedar Point, Six Flags Great America, Kings Island, and Holiday World for the first time in 14 years, and my first time ever at Dollywood. I was lucky enough to ride Lightning Rod on his third day of official operation. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, please consider giving me a sub. If you want to see other years that I've done in this format, check out my playlist. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you also happen to be a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.